Today, I'm taking over as head coach of my alma mater, the Michigan State Spartans, and I'm taking this rebuild seriously. I've loved the Spartans my entire life, but in recent years, we've been on the decline. Just a few years ago, we went 11-2. and two. We had Kenneth Walker, Jaden Reed, but ever since that year, it's been so downhill. 5-7 and seven the following year, 4-8 and eight just last year, and it's time for an in-depth rebuild. Each episode of this dynasty will be half of a season. So by episode 10, it'll be the year 2029. I'm going to go in-depth on recruiting, in-depth on each gameplay, in-depth on my players, and in-depth on the game plan. Let's hop in. The Spartans are an 83 overall with an 82 offense and an 84 defense. And we firmly sit as a three-star program. It could certainly be a lot worse, if you remember Old Dominion, but it could be a lot better too. Recruiting is going to be pinnacle. We can definitely pick up four and five-star studs. We just have to monitor the activity, make sure we're doing hard sells and scheduling good visits. Let's get started. I'm going to start my coach build as a recruiter. I'm going to focus a lot of my time and energy on drafting superstars. For now, I'll stay with Michigan State's pro style offense and our 4-2-5 defense that is subject to change. And I finally figured out what offensive aggressiveness does. If you watch my Iowa rebuild, I cranked this to 100. In simulation, my coach would consistently fake field goals, go for it on fourth, and always go for two. Even even when it was crazy to go for two. I don't want to be that ridiculous, but I do like offensive aggressiveness. We're going to send that to 70 as well as defense aggressiveness to 70. Head coach Matt Meeks is ready to turn the Spartans around. The stretch that Michigan State football had from 2010 to 2015, stringing together Big Ten championships, big bowl game wins like the Rose Bowl, and hopefully getting a national championship in there somewhere, but these last two years have been pitiful. It's the first week of 2024. First things first, the schedule. We've got an easy first four games and then we kind of hit the gauntlet. Ohio State at home, away at Oregon, a bye week before we take on Iowa, Michigan, Indiana, and then we close out the season with Illinois, Purdue, Rutgers. This middle stretch of the season could very easily be three losses, if not four, out of these four games. We're going to have to be locked in if we want to survive the gauntlet. The roster does have a lot of good juniors and I'm excited about that. We've got standout tight end Jack Velling. We've got a stud running back Nate Carter. Wayne Matthews is our star linebacker. And our best players are senior center Tanner Miller. Dylan Tatum's also a junior. We've got a sophomore punter. Aiden Childs, our quarterback. He's a field general, but he's also really, really fast and he's only a sophomore. So we should have good QB play, assuming he stays healthy for the next three years. That's really exciting. I still want to get a solid quarterback recruit, but I can always just redshirt him so that when Aiden Childs graduates, we'll have an excellent redshirted replacement. We also have a really good kicker, Jonathan Kim, which is actually really helpful in this game. Kicking is hard. A bulk of my corner room are seniors, Angelo Gross and Ed Woods, so we will have to shore that up. And the offensive line is pretty mediocre. Joe Elrod's a 72. Phillips is a 74, our center is a start, our right guard's a 73, and our right tackles are just okay, but they are both sophomores. I'm definitely gonna start Ashton Lepo though. Ashton Lepo was actually on one of my videos like three years ago before he went to Michigan State. I gotta get my boy in the lineup. I'm gonna have Lepo start at left tackle and Stanton will start at right tackle. We definitely need to recruit some guards to Michigan State. Our wide receiver room is also not the best. We've got two seniors. The other thing about the Big Ten is since we introduced USC and Oregon, the Big Ten's a lot faster than it has been in the past. And I, I honestly think Michigan State's offense is a bit outdated. Oregon is a high scoring fast team. USC is a high scoring fast team. Ohio State's a high scoring fast team. Michigan still kind of plays Big Ten football, but we're not gonna survive in the Big Ten if we don't adapt. I need to recruit some fast elite wide receivers. So with that being said, I'm gonna put my first coach skill points into the recruiter wide receiver tight end tree so that wide receivers and tight ends take less time to fully scout and let's get working on recruiting let's find some guys in michigan vallejo's a four star already interested in michigan state i'm sorted by all michigan guys right now it should give me a little edge all right our board is set there's a four star corner already pretty interested in us before i scout him i want to get points in my scouting tree so i'm not wasting owls he's got 90 agility and he's in the upper tier of speed just gonna offer him a scholarship keep him on my radar. Now, as far as wide receivers go, we're really just looking for a really fast guy. Ooh, that's a good start. Ronald Charles is a gem. Gem prospects, technically one star higher than they appear. So a gem three star is really a four star. A busted gem is technically one star lower. So if you get a gem or a bust, it doesn't mean the player is horrible or amazing. It just means that Ronald Charles really should be considered a four star, but he's being recruited as a three star. 98 speed, 92 excel, he's 6'2". 
and he's from Dearborn, Michigan. He's already really interested in Michigan State. This is a guy we're gonna keep our eyes on. I'm gonna offer him a scholarship and I'm gonna send the house. I'm gonna try and pin this guy down early. Northwestern Indiana are slightly ahead of us. There weren't a lot of good guard prospects, but I could always take a center and just put him at guard. So Tay Bickley right now, pretty interested in Michigan State. I'll keep him on the radar. Darren Whitaker is an athlete power rusher. Any pursuit is speed doesn't look incredible. Ooh, this is a gem athlete. So technically he could be any position, but he's six foot five physical tendencies, probably just a deep threat wide receiver. We're already his first pick and he's already committed. That's aggressive. Wow, well, spent almost no hours on this gem three-star athlete. Now in the off season, we get to pick his position. We can see if he's better suited somewhere else. There's a chance he's a quarterback. He's 91 speed. We'll just have to see. Wow, we, oh, oh, that's a gem four star. So this is technically a five star. We're finding gems like crazy right now. Now his pipeline's Minnesota. So naturally has Minnesota up there, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Michigan ahead of us. See if we can shark him away from these guys. I'm going to send the house on Missy. This would be a five star wide receiver to go right alongside Ronald Charles, if we can get him as well. That's a 98 speed wide receiver and a 92 speed six one five star. I'd also love a really fast user. It's Emmanuel Gideon. Few schools ahead of us, but we're in the race. He has 88 speed as a user middle linebacker. Would love Emmanuel Gideon. Now, just like most rebuilds, I plan to play the key moments but I don't want to be the sole determining factor of every single game. I want to build a good team and play well, not one or the other. I threw John Dragos in here in case I ever wanted a scrambler QB. He's got 91 speed. Sometimes it's really that easy. He's already verbally committed. We'll have a 91 speed quarterback. Putting some points in a few two-star guards because I do need guards. Can always redshirt these guys if they're trash. This is the best quarterback that's realistically available. Four-star Chance Rubin. He's got 79 speed, 85 agility, so he's not faster than Aiden Childs, but he has a four-star. This would be the guy that we'd redshirt and hopefully just hang on to. I'm sending the house and I'm just going to scout these wide receivers. Receivers. That's our recruiting board for now. We have two verbal commits. John Dragos, 91 speed scrambler quarterback, and Andrew Foss, the gem athlete. Really keeping my eyes on Ronald Charles, the gem with 98 speed. And then there's Jermaine Missy, the four-star gem wide receiver, and Emmanuel Gideon sending the house at both of these guys. That's our first week of recruiting. And it's time for week one against the Owls. I'm gonna put some hours into Vallejo. I'd love to pick up a four-star corner. Just send the house on him as well. Charles is heavily influenced by Michigan State, so that's good. I can't do a softer hard sell until he narrows down to his top five. So we've done as much as we can with him. Bickley likes Michigan State. Garrison likes Michigan State, but he's honestly ass. That is so slow. Darren Whitaker's an athlete power rusher. 80 speed, 88 pursuit. It's actually crazy fast for a right end. Michigan's kind of got him right now, but I got to keep him on my radar. Hoover likes us. Jermaine Missy likes us. Gideon likes us. They're all good starts. Emmanuel Labinho. 95 speed, 93 excel. Oscar Bello, basically the exact same build. I think the only thing right now is I need to get more defense on my radar. Keep in mind, I have fatigue, wear and tear, and injuries on. I wanted this to be very realistic. This season opener at Spartan Stadium, taking on the Florida Atlantic Owls. Recruiting's fun, but we've got a full team to use right now. We're not gonna see any of those guys for a year. Sparty! Fight! Fight! Raw team fight! Victory for MSU! There's Tanner Miller. It's actually so crazy that this game exists, man. My whole life, I went to Michigan State football games. Me and Tarn used to sit right there, front row on the left side. We used to go back to NCAA 14 and play all the time. Let's give the crowd what they came here for, yeah? Our standout stars on this offense. Montori Foster Jr., wide receiver number three. Nate Carter, running back number five. Aiden Childs, QB number two right here. And then there's Jack Velling, number 12. 12. And I'm going to go to the best player on this offense, and that's Jack Velling. Frankly, we might be able to go right back to him. Going play action, power O right here. Good. Jack Velling, he's double covered. It doesn't matter. That's another catch for Velling. And now we'll play classic Big Ten football and punch this ball in the end zone. Like I said before, though, my guards are the weakest point of this offense. So let's see if we can get a push out of him. He didn't even get in front of Nate Carter. Nate Carter did all of that. And there's our first touchdown as the Spartans. It's going to be 7 to 0 against the Owls here. And it was all Sparty in the first half, 20 to 7. They're bringing me back in to close out this red zone drive. Little play action. Ooh, and that's a screen. We got a little decoy motion here out of Nate Carter to set up this pass play. Don't forget, Aiden Child is pretty damn fast. 
I'm gonna have Nate Carter step up. I'm gonna bend the corner with Childs. I don't think it's gonna go like this against Oregon and Ohio State, but it's always nice to get a nice little first game here. Waited for my blocks that time. It's second and goal. And already you can see wear and tear. Nate Carter is hurt. Let's try and punch this in right now and then just sub Nate Carter up. They want me to keep the drive alive here. I'm going with my favorite concept, verticals with the Texas route, and you are not going to guard Jack Valling like that, baby. FAU responded with two quick touchdowns. I didn't get a rep on defense. I'm back on O. 29 to 22. How's the coverage looking? Oh, you're open, but can I make that throw? Childs! Oh my god, what the throw? A few first downs, we can just kind of close this game out. I'm going to step up with Childs. I don't see much. Second and 15, I'm gonna hit the slip screen here and there's a linebacker blitz. This is a perfect time to run the slip screen. Nate Carter, big spin, fumble! FAU football. I was just talking about how fatigued Nate Carter was. Looks like I will get to play some defense. Don't call it a comeback, boys. Spartan Stadium's getting loud as they should be right now. We need them. Hmm. I'm gonna blitz the linebackers. Uh-oh, not on the right dude right now. I'm trying to switch stick. It's not letting me. Yep. It let me do it that time and it worked! The switch stick interception. If you flick that right stick up, you can change players mid-play. Results in a huge interception there. FAU's got two timeouts left. One more first down and this ball game's over. A little too close for comfort, but we should get out of this game alive. Let's make sure we cover up this football. Beautiful. See if FAU can stop the same play two times in a row. They can't. Hey, we gave the home field crowd a win. But if this is indicative of the rest of the season, it's going to get a little scary. Because that's the FAU out. Nothing against FAU, but that's not Ohio State. Really solid performance out of Aiden Childs. Nate Carter had a great game, too, with two touchdowns. But that fumble was big. Montori Foster also punched in a lot of yards. So did Jack Velling. All of our stars got involved. Chris Bogle with Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Two sacks, two TFLs, and seven total tackles. We've got more coach points to spend. I'm going to max out the wide receiver receiver tree and I'll start working on DBs as well. Vallejo is slipping away but there's nothing we can do about that right now. We're still in the lead on Ronald Charles. Whitaker is also slipping away but again there's nothing more we can do at the moment. Boyce still likes Michigan State. Foss already verbally committed. Hoover's looking good with minimal investment. Jermaine Missy we gotta stay on top of this guy. Likes Michigan State. Gideon likes Michigan State and then Chance Rubin this is the one good quarterback option. Kind of just waiting for these guys to narrow down their teams because we can't schedule visits or hard selling until then but we should be in the top five these two wide receivers are looking real easy right now we just got to continue to monitor our prospects after an easy win against maryland ronald charles is available for a hard sell but i don't have the hours so i have to take the hours off of somebody gotta find a prospect that we're just not gonna get whitaker is possible and he's really good I can remove this because Boyce already likes us. All right, I adjusted what we could. All right, I'm going for the hard sell on Ronald Charles. We have the perfect sell too. Prestigious is coach, conference, and proximity to home. We're B, A plus, A plus. This should land us Ronald Charles. Absolutely. I'll try the same thing with Whitaker here. Ooh, we don't know much about him. I'll go for the soft sell here. I'll go conference, coach, and athletic. C. Whitaker is a shot in the dark, but I'd really like to get him. This is a mediocre soft sell, but I gotta try it. We'll sim through FCS Midwest as well. I think the next game I'll step in on is Ohio State. 3-0 to start the season. We knew that the start of our season was pretty easy, though. We're taking on Boston College next, who's 2-1. We jumped into the top for Vallejo, but he's not quite on his top five teams yet. Charles, almost at his top three. Our pitch is working very well. I'm gonna give him 10 more hours. Bickley looks very secure. I'm scared to schedule a visit for this dude. I mean, we're gonna, are we gonna beat Ohio State? I don't think so. Maybe Iowa? I'm going to schedule a visit against Iowa for him. And we'll show him the trophies. Missy and Gideon still look really good. I'm going to soft sell this four-star right tackle. Takes 10 hours to DM a guy. I mean, seriously. Takes 30 seconds. I'm going to try this. We're looking good on a lot of these recruits right now. And a loss to Boston College means at home we're taking on undefeated first in the nation Ohio State. We're 3-1. This is going to be a tough game. Two of my favorites, Vallejo and Charles, are both leaning MSU. I'm going to soft Soft sell Vallejo. Oh, that's a beautiful soft sell. Whitaker is going to be tough, but I want to poach him for Michigan. It's a big boy. Missy and Gideon, I've done what I can. We knew this game was going to be a monster. 90 overall Ohio State taking on the 83 overall Spartans. Let's run it. It's been a really solid season start for the Spartans. We did just lose an away game to Boston College, but we beat FAU. We beat Maryland. We beat the FCS team. Three and one is not an ugly start. And if we beat Ohio State, we'll be handing them that exact same record. Everyone knows this is an 
an uphill battle though, and Vegas has set the spread at Ohio State minus 21. Just like that, the Buckeyes start out with a touchdown. Michigan State looking to get one of their own. They brought me in on offense to try and secure this. Third and five. I'm gonna scroll out with Childs, but holy shit, you're fast. Yikes. I forgot that we really do have one of the best kickers in college football, Jonathan Kim. He drilled that field goal from deep. It's first and goal, though. I'm a bit scared about this. It's a pass, and he's just wide open. The next time I touch the football, it's deja vu. Will Howard is back there. It's 14 to three. This is looking ugly for the Spartans, but that's good defense. I'm scared of the run. I'm gonna bring Tatum down just in case. No run, it's a pass. He's going to the corner. Almost intercepted. Hold him to a field goal, boys. Keep this a two possession game. Motions out the halfback. He can throw halfback. He can throw right here and get intercepted. Spencer could house this. Does he have the wheels? Does he have the wheels? Quinshawn Jenkins is close. Oh, oh, I'm out of the one. I just sold his moment. Oh, Spencer, I'm so sorry. That was your pick six, Malik Spencer. Malik, I'm so sorry, man. Hey, Nate Carter's gonna get the easiest stat pad touchdown of his life. Nobody likes Malik Spencer more than Nate Carter right now because he just got a touchdown on his college football record. And somebody is in full doggy style down there. Please don't tell me I have an injury. What were you doing down there, buddy? Well, that's how you flip a game. Now it's third and four. This is the same play that they threw the INT on. Wait a minute! Will Howard goes down out of field goal range. Worst case scenario for the Buckeyes. It's third and inches with 15 seconds left. We're in scoring range. We could win this ball game. This would be a massive win. All right, beautiful throw to Marsh. Let's just get out of bounds. We have no timeouts. We have one more shot at the end zone here before we just gear up and kick this field goal. I think if anything, I gotta look at Jack Velling here. Let's see if he gets position. Let's send Nate Carter out on the check down. Mm, get the ball off. Even an intentional grounding is okay here. Jonathan Kim can still hit this. That's a lot better than a sack though. If that was a sack, the quarter's over. It's a 42 yard field goal for Jonathan Kim. I'm so glad we have a good kicker. That should be money. And? Wide left. I mean, wide's aggressive. It was very close. I thought that was money, man. It still hit the net, just not through the middle. It's a big miss moment right there. 10 to 14. All right, first and 10. They've got me back in. There's Nate Carter on the Texas route, and he's gonna go all the way. Caleb Downs can't bring him down. He had a shot, too. He could have stopped us on the goal line. MSU has the lead, and it's third and four. We're back on defense. Don't tell me we can win this game. We are fatigued, though. Look at everybody. Third and four. He has the halfback check down. He doesn't have this, but can we? Thought he might try and juke. I wanted to light him up on it. Ohio State gets three off of that, but they're back on offense. We must have turned the ball over quick. I expect a handoff here. A star running back, star left guard. Oh, it's an RPO. Second and four, we're on Matthews. There's a read option to Will Howard. What's the play, Ohio State? It's a pass. It's a quick pass. Nice play. It's fourth and two. They're bringing me in to convert this. I'm gonna run this football, but if we don't get this, it's ball game. Fourth and two, Nate Carter to the edge. Does he have it? He doesn't. Oh, that must have been by inches. I thought he had that. That's a huge missed opportunity. Ohio State. Ohio State doesn't score? Did they go for it? Why would you not kick a field goal? Ohio State just made a massive mistake giving us an opportunity as Nate Carter turns the corner almost 100 yards. Wear and tear is getting to him. Oh, jeez. Second and 17. Oh, we're clamped. We're, everybody was body bag on that play. Now it's third and 27. Ohio State defense is no joke. We need a huge shot here, and I need my D-line to hold up. All right, I'm going to take Velling. A little bit of blown coverage there. Can't break the tackle. You break that tackle, we're gone. We're in classic all-go verticals. It's fourth and 10. Got to pick this up or this drive does not stay alive. He sinks. Oh, I thought that was man coverage. That's a bad read. And I think we're going to lose to Ohio State here. Victory formation for the Buckeyes. A little bit too much on defense. And we fall to the Buckeyes. That's the best team in the nation. We're unranked. That was a really, really good game. A few small plays determined that if we had a better drive there, we had a chance. I'm really excited for the future of this program. Got a little two-star guard commit. Dude, what am I missing? Jermaine Missy commits? We were in the lead. We were in the lead, like, by a lot. Damn, I really, like, I actually poured everything 
I had into this dude. That's so depressing. Emmanuel Gideon is my last like superstar that I need to hang on to. I've already hard sold him. He's a gem. Gideon is a gem. Stop. 88 speed. I gotta get this dude, dude. What more can I do right now? He's hard sold perfectly. I actually could put some points so that I can get more hours with him. I could max out the linebacker tree. I gotta get him, dude. I can't lose all my four-star gems. This is so depressing. I've already lost two of them. All right, so I have 15 more hours available with him so I can remove DM and I can contact friends and family. I mean, what more can I do with this dude? It's not letting me schedule a visit. Even though he is in his top five, I'm not entirely sure why I cannot schedule a visit with him. Regardless, I hope we're in a good spot for him. I'm gonna hard sell Josh Westbrooks, but it doesn't look like like he's coming here. We're second. Looks like he might be going to Iowa State. Chance Rubin goes Penn State. We're only fourth on him. I don't have to be too frustrated. Like we we have already gotten a really solid wide receiver, Oscar Bello. We got Raymond Dragos. We got Andrew Foss, who's also a 6'5 gem athlete. And we should get Vallejo. We should get Enrique Vallejo. His visit is scheduled for Iowa. We've got an excellent soft sell, friends and family, social media. Oh, we just gotta close him out, please. Also, Marquee Flowers, we're very close. Very, very close, but we're just not there yet. I'm gonna give him a hard sell. Academic prestige, campus lifestyle, proximity to home. That should be a really good hard sell. And I gotta start adding some more prospects now that I've lost out on a few guys. I filled up our prospect list with a bunch more guys that we can look at when we get some hours back. I'm really actually kind of scared to sim this week now. I'm scared of who's gonna sign where. I generally feel like I'm so much better at recruiting than I have been. Okay, great start. Emmanuel Labinho committed. We now have two excellent freshman wide receivers. Vallejo reached his top three, and now it's the game against Iowa. All of my big visits are scheduled for this game versus Iowa. This is a huge game. Okay, Vallejo, we're in the lead, and he's visiting right now for this Iowa game. I would love to get a four-star corner on this roster. He's got 92 speed, 90 excel. He'll be really good. Bickley's close. I'm gonna schedule him a visit for the game against Indiana. Family visit, baby. Boyce is also coming to this Iowa game, and I'm gonna give him a soft sell. Coach prestige, academic prestige, proximity to home. Jalen Hoover looks Looks like he loves Michigan State. Six foot wide receiver, 93 speed, 96 excel. Gideon is on the brink. This is so scary, but he still is Michigan State right now. I can't schedule a visit. I want him so bad. This is a five-star middle linebacker. 88 speed, 88 excel. Oh my God, I would love to use her. Jonah Westbrooks. I don't know that I can get this guy. I just don't think it's possible. Maybe it is, but. Now, Labinho is a Juco sophomore, so he's a little bit older, but he's still fast and a good wide receiver. Also, hopefully he's a little bit higher overall since he's Juco rather than high school. Sobieski really likes Notre Dame. I'm gonna schedule him a visit for this Indiana game as well. And we'll make sure he knows that he's getting some playing time. Marquis Flowers goes to Illinois. Hey, Ben Priester, three-star tight end. Verbal commit right out the gates on the offer. And I have another quarterback option I'm looking at, Tremaine Kreider. Now he likes Marshall right now, but he really hasn't looked at his schools yet. He's a scrambler. He's a speed demon. We could be in business. And that is going to be it for this episode, boys. MSU Dynasty, we're halfway through our first season. We're three and three. We've lost to Ohio State, Oregon, and Boston College. This is probably the biggest game of our season, ironically. We have so many stud prospects visiting for this home Iowa game. It's a Big Ten matchup. Iowa's 3-3 three and 0-3 three and and in the Big Ten. So hopefully we can close out this game, beat Iowa, get some of these prospects over the edge to become a Spartan. Hey, wish me luck, boys. I love you. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.